Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. Hit the like button if you like and subscribe. I appreciate it very much. Well, I was just looking at the Farmer's Almanac, which I usually go to before winter sets in. I'm not liking what I'm seeing. No. A colder than usual winter is expected to arrive much sooner and good news for the snow lovers but not so good for the rest of us. And I gotta move my speaker here so I can see the rest of this. And according to the outlets, oh, I just lost it. I have to go back up here and get it back. Hang on. Oh boy, hang on a minute, I'll get it. I'm not so good at this yet, but I'm learning. Some of it anyway. Okay, let's go down here. As summer comes to a close, we turn our collective attention toward the colder months of the year in Farmer's Almanac's trusty predictions, but unfortunately, it's not looking good. Okay, according to the outlet's extended forecast, the United States can expect quite a few winter weather disturbances throughout the season. The Farmer's Almanac goes into Pacific dates. And. Okay, here we are. Including folks in the Rockies and across the plains are going to see a whole lot of snow during the first week of January 2023. We see good potential for heavy snow that may reach as far south as Texas and Oklahoma, followed by a sweep of bitterly cold air. During the week between January 16th and 23, the eastern's two-thirds of the country should get ready for some pretty awful weather, punctuated by both heavy rains and snow, followed by one of the coldest outbreaks of Arctic air we have seen in several years. Temperatures are expected to reach 40 degrees below zero. That's not wind chill factor, folks. Nope. 40 degrees below zero. That's incredibly frigid. Sure is. And how much snow will fall in the United States this winter of 2022-23? Overall, the Farmer Almanac predicts a snow-heavy winter across the nation. Those in highest cold weather peril will find themselves in the middle of an active storm track that is predicted to run from the western Gulf of Mexico all the way to the northeast, across the Virginias, and touching upon New York State and New England, all areas that are used to bracing for the cold winters across the country. States positioned to the south of the predicted storm track shouldn't expect a mild winter, though. The outlet warms of chilly temperatures, wintry mixes, snow, sleet, and ice, and pretty frequent storms. Moving north to the central states, residents can hope for a white Christmas as the area is scheduled to receive plenty of snow. South central states, though, will likely see the harshest weather by early January. The southwest sets itself apart from the rest of the country as the Farmer's Almanac predicts predicts a less than normal amount of precipitation throughout the winter season. How cold will the winter of 22-23 actually across the U.S.? If there is one takeaway to keep in mind following the release of the Farmer's Almanac winter of 2022 predictions, it is that overall it is going to get extremely cold out there throughout the next few months. Specifically, the outlet warns the northern central states that they'll be part of the snow-filled hibernation zone, basically the most glacial portion of the country. The northeastern states won't suffer as much, but they should still prepare themselves for unreasonably cold and snowy winter. The west side of the country, however, will either have to live through a normal amount of precipitation or perhaps a drier than normal winter. That latter qualification mostly applies to the South. When will winter end and when will it get warm again in the U.S.? Although the last official day of winter falls on March 19th of 23, 
American citizens can hope for temperatures to start climbing by February. That is delightful piece of news considering that according to the Farmer's Almanac, this upcoming January will be much colder than usual. So there you have it, folks. There you have it. Let me move myself back over again, if I can. There I am. Well, anyway. Well, 40 below zero, my babies, I won't put them out in it. And I've got plenty of those little uh, puppy potty pads all over the place anyway. I use them constantly because sometimes if I take a nap, they'll go on potty paper and uh, it's easier for me to just pick up the paper and pitch it you know but uh, I, I won't uh, I pray that the animals people if you've got doggies and kitties don't let them out not in that kind of what they'll never make it if they do it will be surprising that is hideous hideous cold weather 40 below zero not wind chill mm -mm. that's the temp 40 below and I live close to Minnesota line. I'm in Iowa. So you could say I'm in the northern central part. I would think of Iowa. And we do get it. We get bad ice storms. And we get some good snows uh, that aren't so bad for the past couple, two, three years. Not been too bad. Oh, maybe four inches, five inches, six inches. But to us, that's not bad. You know, when you get up to 9 to 10 to 12 inches, that's bad. Yeah. But I don't drive. I don't have a car. I did have. And uh, I couldn't afford to pay liability almost 50 bucks a month. I have never had a ticket. I've been driving since 16 years of age. Never had an accident. And my liability insurance was almost $50 a month. And I don't drive all over. I go to Dollar Store, Dollar Tree, Hy-Vee, and back home again. Doctors, hospital, that's it. And that's right here in my city limits. And that's oh, maybe once or twice a year, it depends, you know. I have to go once a year for a physical just to get blood work done for my hypothyroidism. But I don't drive nowhere. I don't drive outside of the city limits. Of course, my poor little car, it was a 1991 Le Mans Pontiac best running little car I think I've ever had in my life except for my um, I had um, oh uh, Torino yes a Grand Torino and it ran perfect too it just ran so good I should have hung on to it but at that time my husband decided we needed something better mm -hmm. well we ended up and lost it all <laughs> but anyway that's another story but I don't go into that but anyway, and you know what bothers me most? I just looked at an article on YouTube about share, but the listing underneath it was stars that are deceased. She's not dead. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've ran across stuff like that. Deceased stars. And they're not dead, they're still alive. Oh my goodness. How do they get by with that? Because isn't that a lie? Oh my goodness, here we go with lies again. Mercy, fraud. Isn't that fraud? Considered fraud? You know? Conning people to click on their thing, you're trying to find out who died. And they're not even dead yet. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> oh well, whatever. Well, this is my second video of the day. It's not going to be very long. Um, it's getting time for me to call it a night, I guess. But uh, anyway, and uh, but that just floors me, you know. And I thought to myself, well, that's enough of that. That's just clickbait. That's all it is. You click on it, and you're going to find out they're still alive, you know, which is good. <laughs> you know, thank God for that. But why do they do that? And then they shut the comments off. No wonder. Mm-hmm. But YouTube says it's because, you know, of the pictures. Uh, they've got it said, uh, set, fixed for children. And, of course, you know, Cher and, and her outfits aren't fit for children. 
No. They're hardly fit for adults sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, but she is very ill. Yeah, Cher is very sick. And uh, I hope and pray that she gets better. Yes, I do. And her her marriage and, and stuff. And uh, Chastity is, is a beautiful, beautiful young lady. Yeah, so cute. But I guess uh, her marriage to, uh, what was his name? Uh, Bono? Bono? Yeah, I guess wasn't quite as happy as we all thought it was. And they put on a good appearance on stage. And um, it was beautiful, some of her shows and her beautiful costumes. Oh, my God. I hate to think what they cost. You know it? But they were made of art. Let me tell you that. And she fit them to a T. But <clears throat> very scampy. A lot of them. Not fit for children. No. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, people, I'm going to say good night. And, um... It's been a sad day, again, because of the 9-11, and I just can't, can't imagine. And you know, it seems just like it was yesterday that happened. It really does. I got the years mixed up. I said 17, but it was 21. And I got to thinking, you know, after I was off the video, so I went back and did a correction. But uh, I kind of added up the years, and I thought, 17? No, it's been a little bit longer than that. Yeah, but it seems just like yesterday. And those people flying out of them buildings, so sad. Well, God bless you all. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll find something to talk about. Okay, good night, everybody, and God bless you. Night.